Hello, I'm Joseph Barker, and welcome to the Finding Ability Podcast. A place where people are able, adaptable, brave, loving, and exceptional. This is a place where we get into deep conversations about how we can make our lives better, and how we can make the world a better place. Hello, good evening, afternoon, morning, or whatever time you're in. Uh, It's me, Joseph Barker, from Finding Ability and just from my own life. Um, I hope you're well today, tonight, or whenever it is. Um, Today's talk is going to be about cold water. Cold water is something that um, I've loved for most of my life. Um, Most people don't which is understandable. It's super uncomfortable. Uh, And so we're going to go through just a couple of the benefits and um, just my experience with it. So to start, um, if you haven't been in cold water before, uh, like ice baths or gone for a polar dip, then you're probably horribly scared and your body might instantly go, ah! which totally makes sense. Cold water definitely does that to a lot of people. Um, I've been in a, in a, a couple uh, experiences. Um, one, one time before going into a, uh, a sweat lodge, uh, I went into the, the cold river next to us, and it was like, I think, end of February. So the water was cold, and a few people saw me, and their instant reaction was... <laughs> Um, but then we spent about six hours inside of a steam room or a, sorry, a steam room, uh, a sweat lodge. So the, uh, the cold was kind of nice before. And so, yeah, you might be afraid. You might be concerned as to like the overall negative sensations that happen when you are exposed to colds. Um, but there are a lot of health benefits, the health benefits, um, like going over quickly, include uh, boosting your immune system, giving you a kind of natural high uh, or mood elevation. It helps to improve circulation. Uh, It it seems to uh, have a lot of help when it comes into hormonal um, health, uh, including helping to produce more estrogen and testosterone. So it's a libido enhancer uh, for those interested in that. Uh, it helps to actually burn calories. Um, you, your body literally has to start to thermoregulate, which is something that it doesn't do qu- quite often because we're typically in these very controlled uh, temperature settings. So our bodies never have to actually turn on their ability to generate a lot of warmth. Um, so that happens, which is pretty great. Uh, and the direct result of that is the burning of the calories. Um, it, that also has a couple other effects, um, as in transferring white blood, uh, white, uh, adipose tissue over into yellow. Um, so there's this, uh, mitochondrial, mitochondrial decoupling, uh, in which, um, our white fat, which is how we kind of mostly think of fat in a body. Um, when there's regular cold exposure, that fat will turn over into yellow, um, mitochondrial dense fat, which, um, helps to keep you more warm. It helps to burn more calories. Um, I'm fairly certain that white adipose tissue burns almost nothing. It's pretty much just kind of inert tissue in your body. Um, So it's fat just hanging out. Whereas yellow adipose tissue, which is the kind of like the uh, insulary uh, fat tissue, will actually help to keep you warm. And you only get that if you expose yourself to cold. Uh, I know that there's a whole bunch of different studies uh, showing people who work in... Uh, the colds on a regular basis, whether it's say like um, an abattoir, uh, like meat uh, cooler butcher shop places, um, or people who work outside, say in, in the Antarctic or outside uh, in colder like circumpolar climates, those people tend to have quite a lot more uh, yellow adipose tissue compared to say the average 
person living in modernity spending time in like 20 to 25 ish degrees all of the time, except if they're like running between their car and outside, uh, like then back into like a building, probably holding your shoulders up the whole time being, ah, um, another one, one of the benefits is reduced stress. Um, when it comes into the mood elevating uh, capacity, the hormone, the, the hormone regulating, um, and just the confidence um, that you have from doing something that's that's challenging that your body doesn't kind of want to do, it's this kind of mind over matter thing. It helps to, to really help with stress and to help improve uh, confidence. Um, and so my own experience with, uh, with, with cold exposure uh, really started as a kid where I seem to have a slight natural proclivity um, to the cold, um, which I don't really understand. Uh, one of the things that I, I thought might be the reason is I don't have a right hand. And so when it comes into the surface area that is exposed to the cold, I have a little bit less um, I was always a little bit of, of a warmer kid, and I feel like maybe part of that is because I actually have less surface area to expel heat from. Um, but ever since I was a kid, I was a fan of the cold and building snow forts and really spending time in that environment. Um, fast forward uh, several years into my late teens, and that's when I really became aware of um, cold exposure or ice baths as a way to help recovery. Um, at this point in time, I was on Team Canada with swimming, and that was a, just a regular part of the um, the racing procedure. Warm up, wait until you race, do the race, get your lactate tested because they want to know how much you actually tried um, from like a, a chemical point of view. Um, and I was really good at always scoring stupidly high um <laughs> which is probably why I, I was pretty good at swimming but is also like why i probably also hurt myself quite a lot because i when i got in the flow of things things sometimes broke uh like an achilles tendon um but ice was after a race and it wasn't like a, a requirement but it was highly recommended and I was uh, the only person who I knew who who did it pretty much every single time um, and I found that it really helped um, a lot and I mean it didn't take away a lot of the say deeper or more chronic pain but it would alleviate all of the the more day-to-day -day kind of aches or pains from training and I always felt great after like I, I felt like you know once my body warmed up, uh, snuggling in t for a nap or to just kind of chill out was so much, so much better. Mm. And like how that makes sense to myself is uh, it is nice and cozy to spend time on, on a cold day uh, in your like little fireside chair with your book and a tea or something maybe. But um, I find that, that that feeling of coziness is exponentially more powerful when you say, go for an ice dip first <laughs> and then do everything else. Um, and so my experience with, uh, with cold and ice baths uh, really was that. It was um, a tool for recovery. Uh, fast forward several years of, of me teaching hot yoga um, full-time um, it took me a lot longer to get used to the heat um, but what I found was that um, in having both the hot and the cold is really this magic bullet or this magic technique that really just assists with overall health and well-being and over the last five or so years there's been more and more and more evidence proving how beneficial it is from stimulation of, uh, of stem cell growth into uh, much larger amounts of growth hormone being stimulated in the body, uh, which is something that a lot of people chronically have very low amounts of. Uh, growth hormone, I feel like, is one of those main things that we just don't get enough of on a regular basis, specifically due to the fact that we're always kind of anxious, we're always exposed to light, 
to a certain capacity and we don't really have this natural circadian rhythm uh, within our lives most of the time. And so the sauna or steam room uh, experience and having ice baths or showers or however you, you can cool, cool yourself down, I find that that's one of the most impactful things for overall mental health, physical health, uh, and well-being that I've, I've really ever found. And I've spent a lot of time, um, I've spent most of my, my teens and adult life meditating. I've spent um, most of my, well, all of my 20s and, and the early part of my 30s doing yoga and Qigong and Tai Chi, and all those things are so amazing and so great, but nothing is as awesome as just being able to do a few rounds of hot and cold. I really feel like it's one of those issues of uh, modern society, um, looking at most classical um, societies, we see sweat lodges or steam rooms or saunas of some kind, whether it's uh, in Mexico, where they have them, uh, whether it's in ancient uh, Ireland, where they were called smoke shacks, uh, the saunas in the steam rooms of the Nordic countries, um, or the sweat lodges of North America. Um, I feel like this, this exposure to extreme heat uh, and or cold uh, really is uh, a fundamental part of health and wellness when it comes into being a human being. And I feel as though uh, if we are as a species to get uh, healthier and happier and better able to love and to be adaptable, it really is going to come through these practices, becoming more uh, of a ritual within our lives. A lot of the time people focus on dental hygiene, which is very important. I'm not going to deny that. But what about your physical, your emotional, and your spiritual hygiene? Are people doing those things? And are they doing the things that are maybe the most effective? Uh, we all know that if you brush and floss every day, you're probably going to be pretty solid uh, when it comes into cavities. But if you don't, then eventually something is going to creep up and you're going to get a cavity or some, or, or some other kind of um, issue. And I feel like the same is true with our physical biochemical um, bodies. We need to stress those out in certain ways so that we maintain our capacity to thermoregulate um, so that we have natural amounts of the hormones that we're supposed to have that only get triggered if, if we're actually living a life that's involved with nature. Um, the amount of Canadians who I know who like to hide away for about six months of the year or so and complain about how cold it is all the time, I, there's more of those people that I know than there is the people who are gung-ho about doing polar dips. Although, um, to be honest, as I get older and ha have spent more time doing this, uh, I've found a lot of people who are on the same page. Um, and so, what are some of the benefits of cold exposure? Well, like I said before, there is this immune system boosting. There's a natural high uh, improves circulation, better libido, helps to burn calories, helps to reduce stress. Um, and it's a really fun way to socialize and just uh, be in a community with uh, people. Um, one of the, the main things that is interesting is, uh, like I said before, the, the, the changes w within the hormones that are produced. So growth hormones released. Um, there's anywhere from about 200 to, to 400 uh percent the the normal levels of growth hormone after you have that exposure and why that's important is growth hormone is fundamental in your ability to actually pr produce new cells and to be healthy and if there's chronically low amounts of growth hormone in your body your body's going to have a, l a literal hard time in creating new cells which is so important and so most people are, are acting at, at, at this d uh, growth hormone deficit in which it takes longer to recover, it takes longer to repair any injuries, but if you spend time in hot and or cold, or in this case, mostly cold, uh, it's going to really help with that. Um, the improved circulation is coming from this desire for our veins and our capillaries and, and arteries to, to close down, so they're, they're actually... Um, like dilating uh, or they're constricting depending upon 
how hot or how cold your body is. And a lot of the time when people are spending time in the same temperature every single day in and day out, their circulatory system doesn't have the same kind of elasticity or capacity to expand and contract. Whereas if you're spending time in cold water, your body is going through that, that motion that, and that momentum, and it's helping to provide more resiliency within that system. Um, another one of the, the main things that I've noticed within myself and also others is that there's a, a, a huge amount of mental clarity and energy that's gained. And so I know so many people who have um, tried to get off coffee and they can't find a substitute. They might be afraid to try matcha or some kind of uh, teas of some kind. But what's awesome is that as you go into the cold, it turns on a lot of those pathways in your brain and the hormones in your brain to make you more aware. I know a few people that I've done cold dips with or I, I, I've been a part of their, their first exposure um, and they wear glasses and they say oh my god like I can smell better I can see better with more clarity and I think a lot of that is just because there's there's some good stuff going on in, in their physiology and their kind of typical day-to-day um, biology is just a lot more sedentary and apathetic and so all of a sudden once all those things get turned on they're able to be more present in in, in, in a full uh, vibrant way uh, nitric oxide I believe is is one of those uh, hormones that that's released when there's cold exposure which uh, is um, very beneficial for overall uh, health uh, as well as just capacity to be cognitively present and so um, like I was saying before, with, uh, with with some clients that I've had or just people who I know um, getting off of hot coffee, th- all of a sudden, if they have a cold shower in the morning, they actually feel energized as opposed to drinking a- something and then hoping to be energized. It's not until they actually do that cold thing that they actually kind of feel pretty great. And so if you're thinking about maybe trying to have a cold shower for the first time, do a polar dip for the first time, or to experiment with just putting your hands in cold water. I feel like it's something that's easy to work into if you, if you would like. A lot of people who I know just kind of jump into it, literally as well as figuratively. Um, but what you can actually do is take your time to acclimatize. And so what I've been recommending to to people for years is can you have a cold or sorry, like a hot or a warm shower in the morning or at night or whenever it is. And once you feel like you're thoroughly warm or hot, like not just your skin, but like your muscles and your bones, once you feel like you're like very, very warm or content, start to just bring the cold into the shower. And that might be going just, you know, to warm and then just a little bit less than warm. Or maybe that means going all the way cold. But I think what's important is uh, giving yourself the, the consistent feedback that the cold is not going to kill you. And so it's not about going right into ice or ice water. It's about how can you spend the time going from hot or warm into cool and not clenching your body or getting too stressed out. And eventually, the feeling of cool, when compared to hot or warm, will start to become pleasant. And then you can start to move more fully into more and more cold, and be more and more comfortable and confident with it. Now, I've recommended this to do- dozens, hundreds of people, and probably half of them do that. The other half just go right into ice cold water, which I think is also amazing. Um, and some people just never do anything. And th- this podcast isn't about you know, me judging you for doing it or not doing it. I'm just trying to be able to 
convey the importance as to why it's so great and to why I think that it's important and why it can be a part of your uh, regular habits, whether it's you do it weekly or you do it a few times a year or you do it every day or every other day. Um, when it comes into my own personal experience, it's just been so important and so uplifting. And um, I, myself, like many others, suffer from bouts of depression or anxiety or just overall malaise or just mental or emotional problems. And the one thing that helps every single time without fail is always exp expressing myself uh, in cold the hot's great too, but the cold is especially awesome. Um, if you're more interested in this topic, please reach out to me, leave a message, or send me a DM or a comment. Um, if you don't know who Wim Hof is, Vice has a great documentary about him. It's about 45, I think, minutes long or so, and it just shows you how one guy has inspired an entire generation of people to uh, express themselves physically in cold temperatures and how it can take someone from uh, suicidal ideation and de depression and anxiety and bring them to a place of full of love and vibrancy. And I think that it's happening... <clears throat> because of a lot of very pragmatic or very logical reasons. If a human feels good in their body, and if a human has the capacity in their body to be awesome, to do cool stuff, and you just feel good, well, all of a sudden, you've won. And there's nothing else that you need to do if you are strong and you're able and adaptable and you can do crazy shit well, all of a sudden, all of those negative voices go away. And from my experience, being able to quiet those negative voices and to find a more fulfilling and vibrant life, well, that's all that matters. So thank you so much for listening. And uh, we'll see you soon.